Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Kellen and today I'll be going over 10 of the most hated champions in League of Legends. While some of you might play these champions and main them and love them to death, a lot of us probably don't. Whether they have an annoying laugh like Lulu or Lux, or just straight unfair kits like Zoe, we'll make sure to cover them all today. But before we get started, make sure to go to ProGuides.com if you want to see huge improvements to your rank right now. With the Pro Pack you get exclusive pro courses and pro guides has a feature called instapro which provides unlimited 24 7 on-demand coaching from the best of the best over 100,000 gamers have used instapro today and ranked up significantly so don't miss out on this opportunity rank up now using the link below without further delay let's jump into the list Starting our list off at number 10, we have the one and only Fizz, the title trickster. Anyone who mains mid knows just how annoying a good Fizz player can be. Once he hits his level 6, he lands his shark and you're pretty much good as dead. On top of that, he has a few of the most annoying mechanics in his kit in the entire game, and the first one is his E, Playful Trickster. For those of you who don't know, Playful Trickster lets Fizz hop on top of his spear, making him untargetable and then slamming the ground for a massive amount amount of AoE damage. But that's not even the best part, because Playful Trickster also provides a ton of mobility and it allows Fizz to hop over walls with ease. In addition to that, Fizz has another gap closer with his Q, Urchin Strike, and everyone's favorite Damage Over Time with his W, Seastone Trident. So if you combine Damage Over Time with insane mobility, constant untargetability, AoE burst, and a one-shotting projectile ultimate, you've got yourself a lean mean AD carry killing machine. In all seriousness though, Fizz's E defiles physics. See what I did there? All right, all right. Coming in at number nine, we have Master Yi, the Wuju Bladesman. Ah, this guy is everyone's favorite late game jungler. Master Yi is widely considered as one of the easiest late game carries in the game because after you press your ultimate, your E and your Q, you just take your hands off the keyboard and let the auto attacks do the work. The best part is Master Yi is supposed to be a late game 1v9 machine, but can somehow delete anyone in the game with only three items. His Q Alpha Strike is also one of the most frustrating abilities to play with and against. The I was in Alpha meme is a common phrase for Master Yi mains who have a love-hate relationship with this ability. But the real cherry on top is his ultimate and his ultimate's passive, which lets him delete anyone, including tanks, and then reset his cooldown so he can do it again and again and again. And then of course, he's going to spam his Master Yi 7 emote after he gets his pentakill. Next up, at number 8, we have Shaco the Demon Jester. From his demonic laugh to his joker-like smile, Shaco definitely deserves a spot in our most hated champions list. Although he doesn't currently hold the best stance in the meta, thank god by the way, Shaco is still one of the most annoying and frustrating champs in the game. Whenever a jungler hops onto the rift and sees that your opponent is a Shaco one trick, you better be prepared to deal with tilted laners. Your laners are going to get camped, and trust me, they'll start flaming shortly after. Being constantly ganked by an invisible demonic clown isn't exactly the most ideal situation you want to be in. On top of that, Shaco has another annoying mechanic, which is in his ultimate hallucinate. It's safe to say that nobody enjoys playing against a champion with clones. Whether it's LeBlanc, Nico, or even Wukong, clones can be confusing and just annoying. Burning a key cooldown such as Ignite or Exhaust on a clone feels so bad, and it makes you look like a clown. <laughs> Get it? Uh, uh, yeah. All right, at number seven, we have everyone's favorite top laner, Riven, the Exile. Riven is my main champion and the name of my dog. So you know that I might like Riven and I might love her, but she's also hated by most of the community. Her damage, mobility, healing, shields, and safety make her one of the strongest top laners in the game, but also one of the most unfun. Getting solo killed by a Riven feels super bad most of the time because it kind of just feels helpless. She'll dash onto you, soak up any damage you output with her shield, stun you, knock you up, auto attack you a few times, and then finish you off with a wind slash all in a matter of seconds. Expert Riven players also use a dozen of unique animation cancels to make it even harder for the enemy to react to her combos. But on top of that, Riven also uses no mana and has very low cooldowns on every ability. Her Q and E are pretty much on earth mode for most of the game, so it becomes pretty hard to predict when she'll actually use them aggressively. The other problem is not only do all of these Riven players think that they're experts, but they're also just weebs because they see that their favorite anime character can do all of these 
these different combos, animation cancels, and can fight like a fighting game. And then if they're on your team, sometimes they just go 0 and 20 and feed Cho'Gath. Whenever I play top lane, Riven is my go-to pick. But for some reason, if she manages to get on the enemy team, then I start Riven on a prayer. Next up at number six, we have Yumi, the magical cat. I think it's pretty safe to say that Yumi is one of the most hated supports in the game. Even if the support roster is filled with some annoying champions like Morgana, Blitzcrank, and Lux, Yumi stands a notch above them in terms of frustration. Not only is she untargetable for most of the game, but she's also a portable healing machine that provides a ton of CC and an annoying amount of poke. Her Q prowling projectile is almost impossible to dodge if you're in range due to the fact that she can change the trajectory of the ability with her cursor. Her ultimate final chapter is just a barrage of Sona ults that are so hard to dodge because of how wide the ability is. Seriously, it covers half the freaking lane and she can reposition it wherever she fires from because she can detach from her AD carry. But if you thought that was annoying, Yumi can also go full glass cannon without worrying about ever dying because of her safe playstyle. Ah, <sighs> come on, Riot. You gotta be kidding me. Who designed this champ? Kidding me, man. All right, all right. Who's ready to help us invade Area 51 to find those Vlad nerfs? At number five, we have our favorite little bloodsucker, Vladimir, the Crimson Reaper. Despite being one of the most broken champions in the game for... Oh, let me see here. Three years? Vladimir has managed to escape the balance team's radar and remains untouched to this day. The thing about Vlad is he's one of the rare champions who can successfully hit 45% CDR after boots plus one item, and he becomes a team fighting machine. His ultimate combined with his E flash QW can single-handedly remove any squishy champion that he wants. Not to mention that his E and ultimate are also AOE abilities, so they can decimate more than one target. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. His his W Sanguine Pool also makes him untargetable for two seconds, allowing him to enter and engage fights with a ton of safety. If you follow that up shortly with Azania's Hourglass, he'll remain untargetable for a decade. Honestly guys, I don't really have a good pun ready for vampires because they just all suck. Coming in at number four, we have Trindamir, the Barbarian King. I'm sure everyone watching this video has experienced just how annoying it is to play against a split pushing Trindamir. His mobility, attack speed, and crits make him a split pushing machine. Not to mention that whenever you duel him, he's essentially just beating you by right clicking once and then taking his hands off the keyboard. The most annoying part about this champion is his ultimate Undying Rage. For those of you unaware, Undying Rage does quite literally what the ability is named. Trindamir's lust for battle becomes so strong that he is unable to die no matter how wounded he becomes. He becomes completely immune to death for 5 seconds and then instantly gaining 50, 75, or 100 fury. On top of that, Trindamir is one of the few champions in the game who takes Ghost instead of Flash sometimes because that's all he needs to make those flashy plays. The champion is virtually un one v one simply because of the amount of stats that he has. His Q gives him increased attack damage based on how low he gets, and of course, if he uses his ultimate, he's going to be at 1 HP, gaining a ton of AD, and his W reduces your AD. So if you're an AD melee champion, you literally can never 1v1 him. All right, into the top three now. We have Zoe, the aspect of Twilight. From her cute little face and voice lines to her kid-like spells, it's hard to hate Zoe from just an appearance perspective. I mean, come on, how could you hate an innocent kid? She's kind of like a little Disney character. Well, you can't until you play against her. Where do we even begin with this champ? All right, let's start with her Q, Paddlestar. Paddlestar is a tiny little ability that can be redirected and does a ton of damage based on the travel time. On paper, the ability seems pretty fair until you get hit by Sleepy Trouble Bubble with that Paddlestar hitting you like a truck. This freight train combo that's almost uncounterable unless you have cleanse or QSS does so much damage and it's so hard to dodge. If you combine that with her ultimate portal jump, she becomes the most annoying poke champion in the game. But that's not even the worst part of her kit because Zoe can pick up summoner spells that you've used recently. That means that she can flash like at least 1 million times in a single team fight. Not to mention that she can also pick up OP item actives such as Redemption or Hextech GLP from killing minions that are holding the little balloons. If you main mid, then make sure you start playing her because wins will become so easy. Next up for the top two, we have Teemo, the Swift Scout. Do I really even need to give an introduction for this little Yordle? Everyone, I mean everyone, knows what it feels like 
to be blinded by Teemo or step on one of his shrooms. Much like Zoe, it's hard to hate Teemo when you only look at his appearance, but as soon as you step onto the rift, he'll make you want to pull your hair out. Every single ability in his kit is designed to piss you off. His passive, Guerrilla Warfare, allows him to stealth himself anywhere on the map. His Q, Blinding Dart, does a ton of damage and also blinds you, making their auto attacks miss for a few seconds. His W, Move Quick, increases his movement speed by a huge amount, making this tiny little brat be able to dodge all of your abilities. His E, Toxic Shot, is a DOT poison effect that will literally demolish your HP bar. Even in the early game, you get auto attack twice and you're dead. Finally, his ultimate Noxious Trap is probably the most annoying ability in the entire game. He plants these little shrooms on the ground and they damage your HP bar slowly if you step on them. By the way, when I say damage, I mean they kill your HP bar. This champion does 150k damage to champs every game just because of the shrooms alone. Seriously guys, Teemo can't be mo annoying. Okay, before we jump into our number one most hated champion, let's run down some quick honorable mentions for every single role. For top lane, we have Alawi. Her E is one of the most annoying abilities in the game, and her ability to turn around fights and demolish every single member on your team is seriously so unfun. She turns those 1v2s into double kills all the time. Darius is also another top lane honorable mention. He definitely gets kited late game and isn't in the most overpowered spot at the moment, but there's something so frustrating about laning against this champion, because I swear, sometimes he just walks up to me and insta-kills me and just runs me down with ghosts. There's almost nothing I can do if he ever pulls me in. For the jungle role, we have Nunu. Getting counter jungled by a good Nunu player is super tilting because he clears your camps extremely fast and then runs down your mid lane with a gigantic snowball. There's almost no counterplay. And Nunu has a really, really game breaking bug that we need to talk about. Sometimes he literally just teleports into your lane because of snowball, having this huge bug that just basically makes him a stealth champion, which is why I ban Nunu every game. Ramus and that stupid powerball is also so annoying to play against in the jungle. He just runs you down and ganks every lane. I swear these Ramus autofill junglers are the best junglers I've had in three months because they just gank every lane. They might be down three levels to the enemy Graves who farms all game, but he already won every single lane by ganking nonstop. For mid, we first have Malzahar. His space aids and a point and click CC is really annoying. Gotta love what he does. Pushes you in, always CCs you, and always wins because he's so easy to play. LeBlanc can also be super frustrating to play against due to how strong she is early game. Even the worst LeBlancs seem to be able to find some early kills and some solo kills. Obviously the difference between a good LeBlanc is that she's able to win the game and just end with her lead, so a lot of the bad ones don't even end up winning even when they start off 10-0, but it doesn't mean it's not annoying to get fed on. For ADC, we have Draven. His autos hit like a truck, and he can pretty much 1v2 you and your support once he completes his first item. The thing is he's very hard to play, but even even the average Draven player makes laning phase impossible. Have you ever tried trying to play a Vayne early game versus Draven? Speaking of Vayne, she's also on our honorable mentions list. There's nothing more annoying than shutting a Vayne down and then all of a sudden she hits three to four items, kites around your entire team, but you can't see her the entire time. She stealths around and kills everybody. The fact that she also never has to build Last Whisper means that late game she's good at killing squishies and tanks at the same time. Finally, for support, we have Lux. From her long range AOE shields, Lux is the perfect support for players who want to tilt opponents during the laning phase. She hits one binding and you're guaranteed dead. Speaking of just landing one skill shot, for our last support honorable mention, we have Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank, in my opinion, is the League of Legends equivalent of a true one-trick pony. Blitzcrank only has one trick, but wow, that trick is really darn good. He's really only useful for the pull, but if he ever, ever does land the pull, you can be useless. The most crap Blitzcrank all game long, but 50 minutes into the game, you pull the Caitlyn into your team and you're a god. How annoying. All right, guys, last but not least, at our number one spot, Finally, drum roll please, we have the much anticipated Ezreal. But don't you hate Ezreal with the arcane shift and I'm just kidding. At number one, we have Yasuo, the Unforgiven. Do I really need to explain this? Honestly, do I? From the unlimited dashes, to his burst, to his win wall, Yasuo is by far the most hated champion in the game. Every single time that he's on your team, 
He'll be 0-12 during the laning phase, and every single time he's on the enemy team, he's literally faker. It appears that Yasuo is the most coin flip hit or miss champion in League of Legends, and is by far the most hated. Every single ability in his kit is just frustrating and annoying to play against. The thing is, right now, he has the second highest ban rate right behind Mordekaiser, and Yasuo is literally bugged. He's not even really that good of a champion because abilities just go right through the win wall, and he's still the second most banned champion. Can we just lock Yasuo up in a prison so he can't get into my games? Well, I guess that wouldn't help that much because if you think about it, he always has a key. Alright guys, that'll be it for our top 10 most hated champions in League of Legends. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, a comment, and subscribe to our channel to be notified of our next videos. If you want to see us do another video like this one, except maybe for a role specific list, then please let us know in a comment section down below what role you want to see next. Last but not least, make sure to check out ProGuides.com if you want content that was made by your favorite pro players, such as Night Blue 3, BoxBox, and Bunny Fufu. It'll help your gameplay out a ton, and you'll see some massive improvements in your rank. That's going to be it for now, and I'll see you guys on the Rift.